see me, you Stevie. Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Evie and make it look easy. What is up, Earth's mightiest subscribers? It's your boy Ernie. Blur without fear. And today, got a couple of very special guests in the building. Uh, I'm going to be running it uh, from, well, I guess what is effectively on screen, left to right, uh, artist Larry Stroman, uh, who is joining us here today, alongside writer Todd Johnson. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with those names, I don't know why you wouldn't be, you should be. But uh, these are the creative minds behind Tribe, a comic that, I actually remember picking up back uh, in the day uh, you know, as a kid, you know, going into comic shops. And so this is actually pretty damn awesome to me. Gentlemen, how are y'all doing? We are doing good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so. I, I, honored to be here. Honored to be here. Hey, hey, I'm happy to have you. I'm happy to have you. So, uh, yeah, it, it is. I, 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 I thought this was really cool because you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, once again, I already kind of put my, uh, my age out there to my audience on this, but, um, I remember tribe when, when tribe originally released, I believe, uh, this was through image comics. That was like what, like 92, 93, 93, 93. Okay. So yeah, around that time. So 10 year old me, uh, going into the comic shop with my allowance money, uh, you know, going, just picking up comics. And this was like a kind of like the time where like, you know, image was kind of going through their big, like, you know, uh, you know, hitting the streets, uh, you know, boom. And all these comics are coming out. So I was like, yeah, you know, the, you know, everything was like, Ooh, I want to check out what's going over here at image comics. And I actually, like, I legit remember seeing this comic and, and picking it up then. So like, I, I gotta know what was it like, like bringing that type of a comic into the mainstream, yeah, when comics like that really didn't get made very often, like uh, you, you having having uh, a, you know, a black writer, having a black artist, you know, telling a story that you know, is as, as diverse as this. Like, what was that like back then? Well, that you know, you just answered your own question pretty mm -hmm. much. You know, mm -hmm. it's because there weren't creative teams like that as much back then. So, you know, putting a, putting together an African American creative team, it was easier for us to you know create our environment and our comic property. You know, mm -hmm. you know, we just kind of everybody thinks you just set out to do a black team. You know, we're just black creators that happen to do black content. It was just a mm -hmm. natural for us. It wasn't like something we set out to do. Mm -hmm. So our experience and our you know our environment you know is shaped within the comic of how you know how the the team mm -hmm. comic is, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And like just uh, I, didn't, I really didn't think much about it at all. Yeah. I mean, it was just <laughs> I was already in the comic industry, and I just I just think of I didn't think of it in terms of black guys doing a black comic. It was just mm -hmm. we were just doing a comic, mm -hmm. right? Because I think like uh, back then, uh, I want to say kind of in and um, was it about in and around about that same time. I was familiar uh, with your work. Uh, Larry through uh, X Factor uh, because I was that was it was during that this probably maybe maybe a little bit before that I can't remember exact timeline on it but I was actively reading stuff like X Factor uh, you know because I, I read every X Men related comic to some level or another uh, like most kids probably did back then it was at such a time where I just I wasn't used to seeing that sort of thing like I know like Milestone was kind of coming up. Uh, kind of in and around that same time, but like it was still like kind of like a bug, not the feature of a lot of things. Like it was just really uncommon to see. So like, yeah, it was really cool like seeing something like that where I can look at that comic and go, oh hey, th there's actually something that looks more like you know uh, a, a world you know that you know full of characters that look like what I'm familiar with. Word know. representation was was not the buzzword of the day back then. Mm -hmm. That's that's something you hear about now. Everything is you know representation, diversity, and stuff. There was none of that back then. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was very uh, a good old boy network type of thing, or there was very few creators of color. So then people were then had some type of shock when a creator of color actually did a character of color. <laughs> when when nobody is shocked when, you know, when a white guy does a white character, it, it, mm -hmm. it's not looked at like that. So, you know, the, the extension of the type of character you do is just the extension of who you are. It's not nothing like, like Larry was saying. It's not something he tried to do. He's already right. doing comics. And it was, he's doing his own, so he just he did what he wanted to do, you know? 
so you say that too it's it's very indicative of like a lot of conversations i've been having with people uh lately uh talking about stuff like that that like if i were talking to a a person of latin descent who was a comics writer artist and they made a comic that had uh you know a lot of mexican or puerto rican or you know dominican you know, well, you know whatever persuasion no one would be surprised by it, but like today, now, like I don't know, it's one of those weird things where nowadays, like it, it always ends up getting like like singled out as you know as weird. When I feel like it should be more the norm, but um, one thing I'll definitely say though is, and, and, I, and I'm very curious uh, about this is when you guys were uh, were making the comic, you know, of course, you know, this is you, know, I, I always like to refer to it as like the Wild West era of uh image comics because it kind of seemed like image was kind of doing like just whatever they wanted like you were an image you just do whatever you just, you, know, you want to make comic about this cool you want to make comic about that whatever yeah you just do your own thing now like what is it like you because I mean, you know, of course y'all been doing stuff in comic sense but compared to then versus you know right now do you feel like anything is changed for the better or changed for the worse in regards to how books are getting made now um, that's a very that's a very broad thing you just said, but as far as like just just in our own property, mm -hmm. the context of how we're going to present the characters, nothing has changed because mm -hmm. we still have total control over what we're going to do or what we want to do or what direction the characters go. So, in a broader sense of the statement you just said, the mm -hmm. industry and how the industry is moving in whatever direction does not affect us. Mm -hmm. in any kind of way on our individual property it mm -hmm. would only affect us as far as if you want to look at best practices and how mm -hmm. you know things have changed as far as taste you mm -hmm. know like if you're if you're about to make a tv show and you're a guy that grew up in the 50s you'd be thinking about doing a cowboy show if right. you grew up in the 60s you might start with a cop show the 70s you might do a, a hospital show so the only thing that we'd be concerned with as far as how we create now is reaching a target market that we think will connect with what we're trying to do. So that's the only thing we would be aware of that as, as industry, shall we say. I mean, we have total control over our own thing. So it, the outside factors don't really affect us at all. Well, I get that. That, that is the good. That's a good thing about create our own. Cause that's, that's one of the, the things I feel is kind of probably one of the better changes uh, <laughs> uh, in the industry. No, uh, no more like, you know, hired gun. Well, I mean, they still do hired gun, like work for hire stuff, but like the, you see a lot creator owned is more common now. Uh, I feel like than you know, probably what it used to be. That's true. What was the conversation that, that, that brought this back around? Because I know like, you know, we said, you know, 93 is when uh tribe first came out and, you know, we fast forward to today. How did this all kind of pull together? The comic being brought back. Um, I, I think I think the conversation about the comic and tribe in itself happens all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. me and Larry are friends, so we, we talk about it all the time, not about bringing it back, mm -hmm. just about that it does exist and it's ours and we talk about it. As mm -hmm. far as the comeback, I think it just it's just a point when two people decide, you know, they want to do something at the same time and agree. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, being the 30th anniversary was just kind of a legacy moment that we talked about. Mm -hmm. That you know, when you look back over the entirety of a of a of a career or something like that, you say, hey, you know, it's it's just interesting. You know, if you look, it's like a milestone type thing where people always uh, like like family reunions or or high school reunions. You're always the ten year, twenty year, thirty year. So mm -hmm. every time we have one of those moments or so, you know, we were always talking about, hey, you know, ten years. You know, you want to do it again? Nah. <laughs> you know, twenty five years. You want to do it? Nah. You know, mm -hmm. so when Larry decided he was ready to start doing it again, we here we are. So I guess, uh, Larry, what what uh what was the uh was it like a itch that that, that that he's like, man, you know, it would be right right about right this time, or like, was there any like specific like thing that happened that just kind of made like the light bulb go off? Like, yeah, all right, this is the right time. You know, I got we have the story. You know, I have the looks, uh, or anything like that. I really didn't put much thought into it at all. Mm -hmm. It's just I started working back on it again. You know, mm -hmm. I guess the whole uh, 30 year thing kind of meant something. And um, nobody else was going to do a 30 year try book. So <laughs> we can redo it. Well, I mean, not without some lawyers getting involved. <laughs> right. we, we, we couldn't get motivated until we could get a, a space to be on Blurred Without Fear. You know, since I'm, we knew we could do that. Hey, I mean, it was uh, like, it's time <laughs> to get to work. <laughs> Hey, well, I mean, look, you look I, mean, I don't know how much pull I got, but I mean, 
know, I mean, off, off, <laughs> off, off, off getting aside, you know, the, the outside factors that exist now play a major part in how anything is pushed. I mean, you're mm. coming from a time where we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and all that. Now there's so many different medians, mediums that are talking about comics and talking about the 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 genre of superheroes and things like that. So we we hear this. We don't live in a vacuum. You hear people saying, hey, whatever happened to? And mm. uh, where is this artist? And where is this writer? And where is this property? So some of that stuff, you know, that that tends to be legacy moments where people want to talk to you about, uh, you know, your history and blah, blah, blah. You don't want to be history anymore when you mm. want to be current. Right. So in order to be current and be relevant, you have to put out new stuff. You can't keep talking about a long, long time ago. <laughs> so, so, so part of putting this book out will be bringing our legacy into the present to mm -hmm. try to re-engage with our fans that we had and try to, you know, create a bridge into what's now. With bringing this back, because I've seen with some uh, uh, comics that of you, and, and really just stories in general, just you know, it, it, across any medium, not even just in comics. Like sometimes you know, you get like a like a, a revival of a series that uh, sometimes what they'll do is they'll just kind of pick up just like right from uh, like right from where they left off. Uh, in a lot of cases, I've seen this lately uh, with stuff like. Uh, probably one of the best. Well, probably one of the the better examples of late is like a, a Dynamite's Gargoyles or Larry Hama's uh, GI Joe Real American Hero uh, over, I believe uh, at Image. I believe it's at Image right now, um, where it's like, okay, yeah, this is yeah, we're continuing a story from like you know uh, one particular point. And we're just gonna pick up as if nothing ever happened. Like, are y'all planning to do something kind of similar to that, or will it be like a like a retelling, or you know, how how uh, what are you planning to do with it? We're going to pick up right where we left off mm -hmm. and, and, and do the stories we always intended to do it and flesh it out, you know, because with only four issues being created in the past, there's not, you know, we don't want to take some long gap, you know, mysterious, uh, you know, they've been lost in time for 20 years or they, you mm -hmm. know, their missile, you know, went into a, a warp or something like that. Nothing, <laughs> nothing fantastical. Just, you know, pick it up right where it left off and anybody who wants to bridge the gap or what came before that never bought the issues. The issues, obviously, the older issues are still out and available on the internet, but we are going to uh, put together the four issues into a graphic novel as well. Okay, that I was going to ask about this. Yeah, that, that's good to know. Because I think what was, it was, I know there was, uh, you know, obviously issue one, duh, but uh, I know they did, uh, I know there was like a the second and third issue, and there was like a, I want to say one of them was like a zero issue, right? Yeah, the zero issue was actually number four. The zero okay. was just the the marketing of that time. People were putting out zero issues. We put out a zero issue. Try to try to explain that in 2024 terms. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about zero now? You know, right? so why why we did that was from a 1997 thought. So you know, we, we constantly are explaining that zero is four. So. <laughs> <laughs> we will start off with issue five and come right out the gate from there. You know, when okay. people try to study the history of things that have gone on in comics, people don't most of the time have no idea what was going on at the time. Right. So they say, well, why did they do this? And why did they do that? And, you know, why is it back in the old 60 comics? Everybody walked around in suits with these hats that had the band that had stripe on it. Yeah. Because that's, that's just what people were wearing at the time. And, and certain types of music or certain types of language, you know, whatever. So now we're in a different time period than we were 30 years ago. So we have to go by pretty much what's going around now. Mm -hmm. Anybody that read Tribe before, when we do the graphic novel, the only thing that you will notice a little bit that this is not going to be a reprint. It's mm -hmm. going to be what we're calling kind of a remix. So okay. we're going to actually, a lot of the pages of the original series are also being redrawn and we're going to okay. have one central colorist so that it has the same uh, color integrity throughout all four issues and same letterer integrity throughout four issues. So a lot of things will be cleaned up. A lot of the things that we felt were a little clumsy will be cleaned up. I mean, we'll just it's just going to be refreshed, shall we say. So I think it would be something that would be good for uh, new readers as well as old readers. So the old readers will find a lot of little things like, oh, wow, this is cool right here. And new readers will be, you know, brought right into the party. And what you said there is actually kind of really caught my ear because you don't see that very often. Uh, uh, at least I don't 
can't think of any. But like, yeah, going back and doing that, like, so I, I have to ask, uh, Larry, what is that like? Uh, if you're if you're you're going back, you're taking something that you did, and like you're just getting to you know effectively kind of you know put your own like current day spin on it. Like, what is that like? Yeah, it's just the same as drawing a regular comic page, uh, mm -hmm. except you have to be careful with what you're doing because the natural reaction would be to change stuff because your mind works in a different way. Mm -hmm. So there are times when I'm drawing the costumes for the characters and I'm drawing them the way I would draw them if I designed them today. But then I'm like, no, I have to make it look like the original stuff because uh, people would say, wait a minute, why does the costume look like that and that panel? But then in this book, it completely changes, but you never saw the person change their costume. And, and that's, that's one of those things what I was saying about bridging it. You have to still, you can start back in the past. Mm -hmm. And if you want to change something, you have to then gradually do it and make it part of the storyline. It's no different than somebody in one of the issues saying, you know, I want to refresh my costume. <laughs> you know, they do it in the right. they do it in the Avengers, they do it in the Fantastic Four, they they have Janet Van Dyne design the whole team's new shoot. You know, <laughs> you have to talk about it. You can't just mm -hmm. go into an issue and and somebody comes walking out with a brand new outfit. You know, you have to talk. <laughs> that becomes part of the story. Mm -hmm. And in, in one of our stories, we have a character that is a character that does an annual fashion show type of thing. So that might be somewhere where it's a natural transition to say, Hey, check this out. You should, you know, what do you think about this? And the character says, yeah, I'm going to sport that. Then Larry could then naturally redesign all the costumes any way he chooses mm -hmm. and it would fit the story, you know? So as long as it works, the transition will be fine. I like that. I like that. Uh, now, as far as, um, as far as like, you know, moving forward, uh, you know, from, you know, kind of remixing those original, like, or kind of remastering those original, uh, uh, those original issues and then going into, I guess, you know, I guess would effectively be, you know, tribe number five. What could you, as far, you know, without, you know, giving anything away, obviously, but, you know, what could people, uh, you know, especially people who are familiar with, with the comic, what could they like, you know, what kind of, I guess, um, I guess what would be like the through line, uh, you know, what, what, uh, what would be like the hook, I guess, uh, more or less for, uh, for that? Like, what could they look forward to? Oh, uh, they'll look forward to stories that they never were able to finish. I mean, if you were mm -hmm. engaged with tribe at anything, four issues is definitely not enough to engage no. <laughs> in uh, trying to tell a whole team. I mean, we never got around to origins of anybody, which are like, you know, classic things people look for or, or how people met each other. We never got really into any background aspects or family or friends. I mean, you know, you, you just can't develop in four issues. So what people have to look forward to, if you enjoy Tribe, you're going to enjoy it that much more. If you've mm -hmm. never heard of Tribe, then you can jump on, you know, because it's it was a it was a short ride, so we're here for the long ride, you know. Mm -hmm. So this, this is going to be an easy transition. And what we promise is that we're going to take great care to uh, deliver in the same quality that we, you know, we were delivering before we don't, you know, the, the, the time that's been lapsed, I don't think has changed any of our drive towards the excellence that we try to bring with the, cause you know, once again, that's kind of the, uh, the thing when you're talking about bringing something back like that, you earlier, you were talking about like, you know, designs, uh, Larry, like, you know, with the, you know, trying to make sure you kind of maintain some of the old, so that way, you know, there's that familiarity. I, I know, I know you've got some cold designs because, you know, I remember those, I remember uh, those X Factor costumes because I think when you were working on X Factor, that was like the first, that was like all new team lineup and those costumes are fire. Oh, well, are, just, are you asking yeah. if it's going to stay the same? It never yeah, or, stays yeah. the same. Yeah. Like never just, just as far same. as like the aesthetic, just as far as like the aesthetic, like the aesthetic of then versus maybe like what you would do today for like newer characters you introduced. Well, I, I have no idea. I haven't gotten to that yet. Yeah. You know, I just, you just change it as you're going along. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I think, have no idea. <laughs> I, can say one, I, I can say one thing in my opinion on Larry's design on costumes. Mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't put a lot of, shall we say, chronological dated type of stuff. Right. So, you know, when somebody has like a a, a, a classic kind of feel for design and, I, and I, you know, obviously I'm biased, but if you if you kind of classically design something, it will stand the test of time. It's no different yeah. than, say, the namesake of your show, mm -hmm. Daredevil. 
that's a costume from the you know the early 60s that it's it's a timeless kind of thing mm -hmm. you know nobody looks at daredevil's costume you know 40 50 years later and says oh that's so old it's too retro <laughs> they should re yeah they should redo it you know if you i think if you're talented and you and you and you you put some elements into your design that are timeless i think you know people are not craving change 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 all the time well and that's kind of what i was thinking about too because uh you know the costumes that you designed for x factor uh larry like those costume that that costume style has i've, I've seen people copy it <laughs> even to this very day uh so that's what i was kind of thinking like you know because that that was a timeless look that wasn't something everybody was doing back then uh not till after the fact i literally just saw they had unveiled some of the uh, new costumes uh, for the current crop of uh, uh, X-Men comics are be coming out in uh, this summer, I believe. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at those costumes, one of the first things I thought of, I was like, those look like those uh, those <laughs> kind of look like the old X-Factor uh, uh, fits. But instead of being like you know, black and yellow, they're like black and red. <laughs> like not like 100%, but the aesthetic. Like I'm like, that's but very... But the thing is, anytime, yeah. <clears throat> anytime something popular, mm -hmm. whatever it is, people attempt to repeat it. Yeah, some way or another, and most of those most of those attempts are not don't work, or they or they change them by the time you get to the next next issue or so. The fact that it, they pretty much had kind of stayed with some of the stuff I did, but I I would have preferred if they actually stayed with what I did. Mm -hmm. But you know, other guys come in, they have their turn to be creative, and then they just do whatever their version of it is. So I'm I'm okay with that. That's yeah. why I did what I did. For the same reason. <laughs> well, you definitely put your own spin because, like I said, it was it was it was very unlike anything else, and it was I think better for it. We like I said we already know we're doing the you know, we're bringing back tribe as a comic, but one of the things I, I want to know too was so what like is the like the the timeline on the like like when can people look forward to to seeing that back and like and who are you gonna bring it uh, are you gonna do it through Image Comics again or do it like through your own publication or anything like that. We haven't, we haven't quite established exactly whether we're going to self-publish or do through an established company. It will not be Image. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as the timeline, we're shooting for releasing the first one sometime in mid-June. Okay. Of oh, wow. this year. Yeah, this year. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure because I was sitting there I was thinking, I was sitting in my head, I was like, okay, all right, that's a lot of time to get to work on something. I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, it, like this is already like good and, uh, oh, yeah, we're, uh, good and underway. We're, yeah, we're cooking right along. Okay. You know, so now, a lot, of, yeah. a lot of this is like early promo to kind of you know pre pre let people know that something is coming. Mm, no, definitely. Now, I don't know if, uh, if if you can answer this question. Is there a reason why you won't go back through image? Just choose not to. Oh, okay. That's fair. I leave it at that. <laughs> no, no, no conspiracy theory. No. <laughs> no. Well, no, I, I don't think that, but I know that like it's something that I will be asked later. <laughs> no, we, you know, like, we, <laughs> they'll we, be like, like, man, why'd you, why'd you ask? I want to know, like, what's the tea? And I'm like, there probably is no tea, but no, here, no, like... <laughs> no, no, no tea, no tea. We just don't, we don't want to repeat ourselves. We just want to yeah. do something. You know, this is, this is just about what we're trying to do. And I mean, and honestly, that's a hundred percent fair. Nowadays, it is to me, it appears more viable to be able to self-publish a comic, probably than it may have ever been before i don't know uh it seems like something that it's a lot more doable I, I feel like before you know yeah if you didn't have a marvel or a dc or an image or uh you know anything else for that matter uh you know you know, valiant back then and you know dark horse and so on like if you didn't have that then yeah you probably weren't making uh you probably weren't going to you know, have as much of a fair shot at getting your your stuff out there as probably you know anyone else would going through those imprints and there's a lot more imprints now than there were before. Uh, you know, there's a well, lot of people well, out there the, be able to make their own stuff off their own steam. Well, the thing about imprints, though, you have to remember the elements of the industry have changed in a way that the most important thing is not necessarily an imprint anymore. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is a good product that people right. are interested in. And then there's other avenues in which you obviously have to get the word out. Because if nobody knows you exist, then they can't buy it. I right. mean, just sitting here... Uh, the new dynamic of right now is a perfect example of us three sitting here talking about something, mm -hmm. you know, you know, if I take it back to tribe 1993, I would not be sitting on a show talking <laughs> to a guy <laughs> with the blurred cave, having any interest in what we were doing. I mean, the elements <laughs> back then was 
you know, Wizard Magazine, Comics Buyer's Guide, Comics Journal, and none of them cared what we were talking about. So if, yeah. you, can't, if you couldn't convince that that very small dynamic, what are you doing? How do you get the word out? Whereas that you and, 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 and your ilk that are out there now, you guys are more receptive to a varied amount of content, which would include people like us. You guys are more open to independence and, and, and whatever anybody's doing. So being able to have channels like this, I think the strongest difference in the industry now you know, because we already think our creativity is, is is tier one. So that hasn't changed. <laughs> but what has changed is now we can sit here and talk to you. Right. And, and and however you're beaming this out on however it gets out, that's more people that are being aware and you are an influencer within your own space and stuff. And we appreciate that. You know, here we are. Uh, yeah. I, I I appreciate that you appreciate that because uh... <laughs> there, there's, there's some new tribe right there. Yeah. Yeah, hey, oh, bam, right, look, hey, look, y'all see that? Yeah, okay, so I always really liked the style of art uh, and, and how you depicted things, Larry, because it always kind of felt like, I don't know the best way to put it, but like kind of, it was always like kind of very like in your face, it was very dynamic, it like, it, it felt like, you know, I don't know, just, it just, it just felt sharp and, and cutting, and I liked the, just the fact that to see that it looks even better than ever, just in, just in that, what you just showed, uh, alone is, is very, uh, it just, it, it's very telling about the, the, the level of, you know, uh, talent and and expertise that, you, uh, that you're going to be putting behind uh, this. So, uh, so I just want to put some respect on your name just for that alone. And One it actually, thing about yeah. that process, too, mm -hmm. that, you, you know, that a lot of people don't understand by all artists, and I, obviously I, I've always put up front and full transparency that I am biased, but one thing <laughs> that you get when creators are on their own stuff, you are getting an unfettered, pure, unedited Larry Stroman drawing inking and and doing what the hell he wants to do with no mm -hmm. oversight no oh this eyeball is too big or change this hairdo or that butt's too big or that guy's too tall <laughs> so, what you're, so what you're getting in every scene is purely directly what larry wanted to draw and sometimes right. sometimes that's a pure process where you get let people do what the hell they want to do that is, uh, I know, I I a hundred thousand uh, percent agree uh, on that because there's a there's this thing where I feel like yeah, and this is why I love the creator owned space because I see a lot of people that you know, you know, worked at the big two or you know various other imprints you know where maybe they're doing something that's you know more of a work for hire deal and you know seeing what they do there versus when they always are you know doing something for themselves is is always you can just you can tell uh that that passion is there it's not like it, it it's not like one of those situations where it's just a job it does it doesn't work all the time <laughs> right sometimes but, I, but it doesn't sometimes it doesn't work at all oh man <laughs> well i was going to say you have found a you, way you would think you would think if somebody has a chance to do their own thing they do a better job and sometimes mm. it just it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, I, I will definitely say that um, because when knowing I was going to be talking with y'all, like I literally was sitting down and was like, yeah, like going back and, you know, trying to trying to find images and stuff from tribe to, you know, kind of like, you know, just remember what it was that I had forgotten. And I was like, looking, at it, I was like, yeah, like I was like, this is something special. And, and that's, I, yeah. that, that's an important part. What you just said, mm -hmm. when, you, when you say the word forgotten mm -hmm. and you, you know, our history, you yeah. know who we are, but the forgotten part is what triggers us wanting. That's the legacy moment that you, your history, mm -hmm. history is usually things of the past. You know? Yeah. And the further it gets, the further it becomes forgotten history. So that's a very important word to be with that. So we are about to jumpstart it so that you don't have that moment where you're saying, oh, what does that look like? You could just Google it, mm -hmm. boom, it's there. You could just look on your shelf, boom, it's there. You can, you can go to our website, boom, it's there. You know, it's like we, um, I was looking at a, 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 a Facebook page one time, and there's a whole page called like Forgotten and Obscure uh, Beloved Characters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm, 
I'm just flipping through it, flipping through it, saying, oh, I love this guy. I love that guy. I love this guy. And then boom, try it. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, I don't want to be forgotten. I'm <laughs> see, see, that's you why. Know? That's why I changed mine to superheroes you should know. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I, I always prefer that one better. <laughs> well, I tell you, creators, creators can say whatever the hell they want, but that is a trigger. <laughs> when you like, you think you've done some good stuff and people are like, you're forgotten and obscure. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show you forgotten and obscure. <laughs> I'm gonna knock. I'm gonna knock on your door. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like oh, y'all gonna learn. In your Halloween bag, you know, like <laughs> it's, it's funny. But the good thing is when people can say, you know, now that I see that, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As opposed to, yeah. I don't remember this at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's the worst part when they just don't remember it at all. Like I always yeah. say, I like the people that say, "Aren't you the one that did that book?" That it has that cover. It was weird to me because, like, when you told me y'all were bringing it back, it it, it kind of reminded me of like a like it, like like you see like in like a movie or somewhere someone like had their mind wiped and their memories are like being it re implanted. It's like this whole like, <laughs> and, like you get this whole like like you just are like 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 oh my god like I was like I was like oh my god is like that, is that why when I sent you that first message you put you wrote back Todd who with a question mark yeah I was like wait what well, Larry it, Strode and who? Like wait, when you like when it all like when it clicked, I was like, I was like, oh my god, I was like, I like because you know, and once again, I attribute a lot of this to the fact that when you know, I, I say I've been reading comics for a long time, the one thing I never bring up is the quality of a comics fan that I was, and what I mean by that is like I read comics back then, but I didn't really collect them in the strictest sense that like you know people probably did back then, like. I bought them, I read them, I loved reading them, but I didn't like, you know, take care of them. I was just like, oh yeah, yeah I'm, woo, and then move on with my day. Right, uh, right. But like, I were like, I was a terrible comics fan just in the sense that like, I just didn't take care of my comics. Um, and like, I was oh, kind of like, <laughs> no, that doesn't make you less of a fan. It just means you, you wasn't a collector, right? I, I was a, yeah, that's I was a bad collector. That's what I was. Yeah. <laughs> but no, like I, I were like, cause I think about that all the time on comics that I used to read. And I was like, dude, I don't, I was like, dude, I used to have that. Like we are, or where someone's like, you know, brings up a comic. Dude, I used to have that one. Are you saying? like, I, I feel like I say it. that a lot, <laughs> but I was this. glad I, I could say you, that I knew it. I don't know if you've thought about this, but the very mm -hmm. nature and enthusiasm of your fandom mm -hmm. is exactly why you have a show now. <laughs> oh yeah. You, know, you are, you are literally, literally projecting how you feel about the whole entire genre. You know, it's not, mm -hmm. you know, this is not a, this is not a tribe show. This is a reflection of what <laughs> you feel about the mm -hmm. industry, how you're picking your guests and how mm -hmm. you're interviewing and everything. There's no, you don't have a, a lot of gotcha moments or anything like that. <laughs> you, you you love this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm not speaking on tribe. I'm speaking yeah. on the genre period. Mm -hmm. You, you do love this stuff. So, Oh yeah. You're 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 a great fan, like he said. You're a great collector. <laughs> no, I'm a terrible. <laughs> collector. You're a great fan. I, I'm a better collector today. Like you, like if 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 I if if today years old me could go back and say, hey Ernie, look, just um put them in the bag with the board, please, and just <laughs> stop 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 taking them to your friend's house. Stop taking them. To, stop putting them in your backpack and taking them to school. Just leave them at home in a temperature controlled room. <laughs> But and actually take I, care of them. You I, might I have some money. This is gonna, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but <laughs> I can't say we truly enjoy comics back in the day. Mm -hmm. People really yeah. truly enjoy a lot of comics now that they buy that's already sealed up in a piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We talk as if we made a big mistake. But mm -hmm. in actuality, we got out of it exactly what, it, what we wanted to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And that's why all the books end up so raggedy with the front page ripped <laughs> off and all that kind of stuff. Well, I can tell you this from being part of all sides of it, being a fan, being a collector, being a store owner, being a convention host, being a creator. If, if we sit there and look back and see what factor was more important to what's going on now and to create, you know, to create the continuance of this genre, you, what you're doing here right now, and I know I'm buttering you up right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious when I say this. Yeah. What you're doing is more important to a bunch than a bunch of guys running around with books slabbed in a big hard piece of plastic, <laughs> talking about they got the greatest 
9.98765. You know, it's going to be, they are going to find out, and, and I'm not disparaging them. It's great mm -hmm. collection. It's great. We've all collected. I've got some of those behind me. But in the, in the scheme of things, they are going to find the collector thing just like we all did on every level when you go to sell things. The, the collection thing is all, sometimes speculation is always, always pushed by people trying to sell things you know, to you, not buy things from you. Right. So, so when you when you have the 9.8 first edition of the Blurred Cave, and it's <laughs> worth it's worth three hundred and seventy five dollars when you just sold it to them for two dollars. When they come to sell that three hundred seventy five dollar book, they're going to find sometimes it's right back down to two dollars like you originally sold it to them for. And that's mm -hmm. fine. That's fine. That goes in waves. But I myself like the new uh, just the new dynamic of all of these social media channels and people, you know, spreading the gospel of, you know, join this, check this out, mm -hmm. be exposed to this. You guys are extending the John will way more than this collection model is because people get pissed off when the speculate speculation thing changes. Yeah. And they and they leave the they leave the hobby. They leave the market. They're like, ah, I thought these books were worth five thousand right. dollars, only worth fifty bucks. Remember pogs? Yeah, pogs. Man, and, and, God. And, and, and holographic covers and yep. and um, I fell prey to that. <sighs> yeah. Wait till all the fun cold bubbleheads come in twenty years from now and you think you've got, you know, a ten thousand dollar toy because the you know, somebody told you that. <laughs> You know, what, what the, the unfortunate thing of comics is when we start talking about obscure and stuff, too, you could be the Larry Stroman man could be the most popular comic of right now. But 20 years from now, when maybe the book that character just has gone out of flavor or something like, you know, like anybody, you know, like, like when, I, when we were collecting real hard. I mean, the Punisher and the Ghost Rider and stuff like that was guest starring in every book. Now, people don't talk about the Punisher as much. No, you know. You know, people like, you know, Deadpool was not all that popular. Now he's got three movies. He's you everywhere. Know? You, you, you know, could almost like, say he's too visible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come and go. I mean, they, they choose to do, you know, Aquaman has had $2 billion movies. And Aquaman was a joke of a character back in the 70s. You know, so it's like, you just don't know what's going to happen with this. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather I'd rather people constantly be being exposed in, in, in this kind of fashion. You know, this is news. This, yeah out there you know well i mean y'all just kind of put a perspective on me i've never really thought about before because thinking back i'm like oh wow you know maybe how you know the, the regret that i i feel over how i used to treat my comics back then maybe i feel a little bit differently about it now because you know yeah now i'm thinking about it, like well maybe that's what its purpose was you would not have enjoyed it if every comic had to be sealed up in a plastic bag and put in a temper control room, no, you would not have enjoyed those comics. <laughs> no, it they would you know it's uh it would have been um it it, it would be like just taking you know, I I can't imagine anyone you know, buying a movie and never taking it out of the 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 case and watching it you know or. It, 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 what, it seems like such a weird on. behavior. That's a good analogy, though. That's a great analogy. Because yeah. <laughs> I wanted and, to and read think, them. Well, think yeah. about this. There was something that you asked us when we first started this. You asked us about the change in how, why we produced what we did because of the representation now. Is it different back then and when we first started? So I could ask you the same thing of how you mm -hmm. digest the news of how you decided to purchase thing or find out about something. You now represent that representation too. Mm -hmm. Do you find what you're doing? How has that changed the representation of how you get your information about mm -hmm. comics, peers, and other things like that? Oh yeah, no. Uh, word of mouth is. Uh, I feel like word of mouth is a very powerful thing. I can't tell you how many times I've had people you know come back to me and say, "Oh man, yeah, you know, so and so comic that you recommended on the show, like uh, you know, uh, you know, several episodes ago. I, you know, I got around to checking out. Like, dude, I, I'm now." buying all of it or you know man i never really thought about giving so-and-so uh comic a chance uh but you know you said that was good so i was like man all right well if he says it's good maybe i'll take a look and yeah I, i'm guilty of it as well uh you or i say guilty of it like i like i committed a war crime or something but no like i i i am that way as well like you know i've had there's been there's definitely been uh you know my my co-host on the show a lot of the times carter sometimes there's books that he'll recommend to me and i'll be like 
oh, okay, I wasn't even really, you know, thinking about checking that out, but, you know, maybe I'll give it a look now because, you know, someone that I trust has told me something uh, okay, so uh, about take, it. So, yeah. So take that dynamic mm -hmm. and let me flash you back and tell me which one you'd like better <laughs> than the person that's walking through a show with a wizard magazine mm -hmm. and he's walking up to tables looking for only the books that are in a top 10 list that they say. Mm -hmm. And they're walking up to artists and asking them, are you, are you one of the wizard top 10 artists? Because that's the only people they're interested in getting autographs from. So oh which God. dynamic do yeah. you think is better? You know, the dynamic of back then, mm -hmm. you know, or the dynamic now where there's many sources of information and there's many dynamics mm -hmm. of, uh, of talking about what's good. It, what it is, it's not, yeah. it's not so much what's good, what's bad. Sometimes it's just, this is what's out there. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you know you're, you're be, there is no, you don't run your show like this is the top 10, go buy this. No, you run your show like, hey, these are some of our guests. This is what they're doing. You know, check it out. Check it out. Yeah. You judge for yourself. Judge for yourself. Mm -hmm. It was really much more uh, point to do this, do this. It was more kind of lead clickbait type thing back then. Mm -hmm. I like, what, it. I like yeah. it better now myself. I'm inclined to agree because, well, for one, we didn't even really get cons. Uh, well, I mean, we had them, but I they just weren't as accessible uh, where I'm from. It's what city are you in? I'm in Memphis. So okay. I think we had Mid South Con, but that was about it. Um, and it was kind of, you know, your your mileage would vary on what you might see. It was more Mid South Con was always more uh like tabletop gaming centric as opposed to being comics and art and anything else. I mean, not to say those things weren't there, but they just weren't as prominent as what you might find today. We have like we have other cons now. We have like a Memphis Comics Expo, uh, Memphis Comics and Fantasy, so on and so forth. So I mean, we have that now. So that, that it's better now, and you know, it's definitely it's way more, in my opinion, cooler. I can just walk up and you know talk to people. Unless you're like a top tier guest, then I gotta wait in line. But uh, you know, I, I might have to like wait like 15 minutes, you know, under normal circumstances. Whereas you know, I think Kevin Eastman came to town like a few months ago, and it was like a three, four, five, six hour wait, and I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Um, I like the guy, but I don't like him that much. Uh, I, I, I got stuff to do. But no, I do like the idea that people are more accessible. Like, I'm talking to you guys right now. When I'm at the show, I actually have, like, two handlers, and I got a couple of bodyguards. So if you were to try to talk to me at a show, it would probably be very difficult. <laughs> oh, hey, look, I don't want the smoke. I don't want the smoke. I'd be like, man, look, I ain't trying to get, I ain't, I ain't trying to get my ass tore up. Uh, look, I don't want nobody thinking I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm, on, man, I'm trying live, to get you, spicy. Yeah, you, you, you live, you live in Memphis, man. You yeah. gotta wait two hours to see nobody. You just elbow right on up there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but it's, weird. Right <laughs> but well, it's weird. I remember, I remember going up to walking up to Kevin Eastman's table at a show, and we had a long conversation. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hey, That's look, hey, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> no, no. Oh, and, and, and I think. Maybe that is probably like that. That's kind of, I guess, like the give and take of it. Like, I feel like in some aspects, well, I, I will definitely say like connectivity is probably better today just because, you know, you, know, you can just reach out and touch people. But uh, I, I do feel and, and I guess it is kind of a good thing to see. And yeah. I want to thank Kevin for a woman that I knew named Beth. Oh, <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> hey, I'm going hey. to give you I'm going to give you a trick next time you get go to the store, mm -hmm. take your logo. Mm -hmm. And go to, go to Kinkos and have it laminated. Mm -hmm. Get you a lanyard and have your logo on one side and press at the top of it. Oh. Okay, so when you get in line, have, have your clipboard <laughs> with whatever <laughs> and just walk up to the front of the line like you're supposed to be there and just say, That's how you do it. <laughs> and just say, Mr. Eastman. You know, I'm with Blur Cave, blah, 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 Blur Without Fear, whatever you want to say, just trying to see when's a good time that we can come interview you. Just cut in line and start to, I guarantee you, talk to you or anybody else will talk to you and they will give you a time. Say, we're going to be interviewing over the next couple of hours. Wanted to catch you before you go, catch you before mm -hmm. we leave. He'll probably start talking to you right then. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that because I guarantee if I don't have the lanyard, uh, I will be walked out in cuffs. You got to have a lanyard <laughs> and it's got to say press. Yeah, it's got to say press on it. <laughs> and, and, and trust me, you have to have the confidence to just say it, mm -hmm. do it, and own it. Mm -hmm. and, and remember, and if one of the guys there, one of the, 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 the convention security guys steps in front of you and says, Holt, you say in very clear words, move out the way. <laughs> yep. Seriously, I'm not, he, he's telling you he's the not truth. wrong. <laughs> he's, telling you, he's telling you the truth. You have to own that you're there. 
Mm-hmm. You're there for a reason, and you already somebody already authorized you to be there, which is yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's like when I go to the club, like, like, uh, like if I, when I go to the club, I just if you act like you're supposed to be there, they'll just they'll, they'll just that's exactly the same thing. <laughs> exactly the same thing. I mean, I'll, I don't know if you are, are, are mm-hmm. you married. Yes, yes. Okay, so when somebody, when you first started thinking you're gonna date your wife, and somebody told you you had to stand in line for 15, 20 minutes, I bet you didn't wait. Nah. <laughs> I, bet, I, bet, I bet you that's why that's why she's that's why she's your wife right now. Yeah. You, better, you better use that same personality. That's, man, that same energy. Up. There you go. Take that to heart though, because yeah, it is something that like I, I will I'll be the first one to tell anybody like usually when I when I go to cons, I'm usually pretty muted. <laughs> I'm, I, I have tried to sneak into cons sometimes. It usually does not work. But uh like as far like when I say sneak, I don't mean like not get it without pain, but just like like I just try to keep a low profile and someone always ends up like being like hey and i'm like oh, you know what it is <laughs> honestly pre- press is powerful okay mm-hmm. and you have to treat yourself there's there's no different than you than abc or cnn it's only the size of the audience so one of the ways that you could start this off from whatever convention is to contact mm-hmm. the convention in advance and say you would like to interview them on your show mm-hmm. about the upcoming show mm-hmm. okay so they want to promote their show so put them on your show. You mm-hmm. got you got a split screen. Talk to someone, yeah. one of the promoters of the show, and talk to one of their creators from the show. So then you immediately become part of the press. Okay, mm. so they'll, you get, they'll probably give you press credentials because you're helping them promote the show, and you go from there, man. I mean, mm. you you have to scale it from there and doing what you want to do and believe that your show has every right to be there because I guarantee you, if the local news called them and said, "Hey, we're going to send over a camera <laughs> crew and blah blah blah," they'd say, "Oh, oh yeah." yeah. Like, they oh, yeah. They're sending 20 people and they say, yeah, we'll have passes for you at the door. We'll have credentials. <laughs> you have to treat yourself the same way. That I mean, honestly, like you you just you have put me on some game. I, I, I have work, such a low opinion of, of how much people know about me. Well, so I'm always surprised I, what I, people do. <laughs> I was at this show and um, <clears throat> one of the, the main guests at the show was uh, William Shatt. And um, so at one point in the show, you know, I was asking him about getting something to eat at the show because normally you know at these shows they they say we have a green room where you can go and get a sandwich or whatever it is but there was nothing there so i end up speaking to the guy who threw the show i said what's up with the food situation i said there's nowhere for us to get anything to eat so he said that he uh wanted to keep a lot of people from going into the rooms and eating up all the foods and stuff so he had it as a in a secret place in a hotel that was connected to where we had the convention at so I go in there, I'm walking around, walking around, trying to find this this room. And uh, so I find the room and knocked on the door. And the, and the guy who opened up the door was peeking through the, the doorway like it was like his house or something. I'm like, man, will you move out the way? So, like, okay. so I come in there and I walk in and they didn't have much food set up at the time. So over in the corner was William Shatner. He was sitting there eating some chicken wings or something like that. When I turned, I said, yo, Shatner. He turned around. He was like, huh? I was like, man, I don't want to bother you. I just want to say hi. He was like, oh, hey, hi. So now suddenly I'm somebody in this room. So the other stars who are in this room are like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> then I turn around and there's a guy who played Luke Cage and TV series and I was shaking his hand and talking to him. And everybody was looking at me like, who the hell is this dude? It's like, he's <laughs> somebody, thing is, somebody. The thing is, if you don't act like somebody, mm-hmm. people are never going to treat you like someone. How tall are you? Oh, man, I am a five foot eight. <laughs> all all of five foot eight. <laughs> okay, so if anything that me and Larry just told you didn't work, mm-hmm. slap this Slap the shit out of somebody. <laughs> look, just look, just look, just just five fing- like five fingers straight to the side of the face. I, I, I bet they'll pay attention there. But just remember, you have to find other shows to go to because they'll mm-hmm. never allow you to come back to that show. <laughs> oh <Yo>, yeah. <laughs> look, I, I can see. I can already see the headline now. It says a uh, uh, YouTuber, Blur Without Fear, has been a uh, uh, banned for life. <laughs> And you, and you wonder why Tri's been gone. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, hey, no. <laughs> now, you, now you're getting down to the conspiracy. They, it's like, see, I knew there was some tea in there. So, no, that's, but, but no, I, yeah. Completely uncontrollable. 
Yeah, no, it's like, dude, they, they, man, they were out here wilding. They were, they, they beat up somebody or something. It's like, I nah, don't nah. we'll show, we'll show you some old grainy film from a convention of people rolling <laughs> off and busted up and stuff, you know. Like, like was it a, uh, uh, oh my God. Like, like on some old, like super eight tape or, or, or whatever, uh, uh, was it DV eights or whatever the heck that was they used to have? Like, you know, <laughs> you got to doctor up some of that old film. <laughs> <laughs> well th- yeah i guess that actually brings up the question too like so are um are y'all gonna be hitting the con circuits uh and anything like that uh in preparation not a, or all not ra- a lot mm-hmm. not a lot but yes okay yeah, we just did our first show here in detroit about two weeks ago at the great lake show and then we have one coming up in june called uh three lakes river con in uh pittsburgh and then we're doing the heroes con in charlotte okay and- and I believe we're supposed to do, we're doing the Atlantic Con, which is kind of a, a new inaugural con in Virginia. Okay. Uh, so right now we have a very uh, light schedule. You know, we, we, you know, we're reviewing anybody that makes any offers to, for us to come or whatever. I mean, obviously with the convention circuit, you got to be invited first. It's that not is like fair. You, just, <laughs> you can't just sit there and sit in your couch and manifest, I'll be here. And that's, <laughs> Well, I was gonna say I'm actually shocked that uh 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 you uh, I guess what would be like uh blurred dot com uh blurred dot con uh uh hasn't reached out to y'all yet about is that a guy named Hilton George probably is it is it in DC I think yeah I believe so I believe it is so so what's gonna happen with some of the shows that where they refuse to invite us is we're gonna show up and open up the back back part of the car and put a table out and just say (laughs) this is Jackson Strowman Con there you go Uh, you gotta get that circus movie (laughs) Hey, do like a little pop up, just like right. Like, hey, I'm not gonna lie, that'd be kind of gangster. I, I would, I would be more interested in what y'all were doing than whatever was going on inside. Because just we're, the, gonna, we're <laughs> gonna get in by having blurred cave press credentials. They, hey, they, hey, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna drop your name and they, everything. <laughs> we were sent here. I'm gonna have a memo and communications and everything. Look, just take the table in and just put it in a, a random spot. Don't and, and don't even ask. There don't even go. ask questions. Don't even. There you go. Are See, you co- are you connected to the blurred con? <laughs> no, no. I uh, I. Truth be told, it's kind of funny. I I I, I almost kind of half ass asked that as a joke because they've never invited me. Wow. <laughs> so I think like I I have been well. I was going to go one year uh, with another group, uh, uh, oddly enough, uh, a blurred.com. Um, but I never, I've, I've actually reached out to blurred.com uh, before n- and never gotten any really word back from them on that. I don't, know if they just don't like me uh and i just i i I live in memphis tennessee so going out to dc just because is just not something that i would normally do well all kidding aside aside, just Mm -hmm. as an exercise Mm -hmm. instead of asking them to come why don't you reach out to them tomorrow just as you would like to interview them about the upcoming con? Mm. Oh, yeah, I bet yeah. I get an invite then. <laughs> yeah, you know, just to tell them that you want to promote the show. You'd like mm. to do an invite of somebody, one of the key personnel and one of the guests. Mm. And I'm telling you, man, the dynamic of how you approach it yourself changes the dynamic of how people perceive you as well. That is fair. Like, like I'm not going to lie. Like, so it, it's, it's, it's crazy because, like, it's such a simple you know solution that like but it's one of those things like the most simple solution is usually not the most like obvious one or, or even sometimes the most obvious one just doesn't you know just leap out leap out at you first and some i'm like yeah i guess i could do that well it's just the mindset <laughs> of you it, it's, it's really just the mm-hmm. mindset of you thinking yourself as the press that you are mm-hmm. yeah that and is treat fair. yourself like the, like most press does most press is a little more aggressive and pushy about mm-hmm. being the press you know <laughs> and that's, and, yeah you know, for us, you know, you know, you go you go back to your bedroom, put on your cerebral helmet, and <laughs> I try, by <bye>, try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the guy who has that uh the bleeding cool site, which you know, we haven't been good friends over the years. But anyway, he uh <laughs> he gets invited to like San Diego Comic Con every year and they treat him like a king. Oh they wow. They fly him yeah. first class, they put him in the best hotel because in the end, people who are the same fans who are coming to the show are people who follow 
that site, you know, mm-hmm. and get the information from that site. So if if more people like you mm-hmm. can start uh, uh, dealing with them from that point of view, then you get first class tickets and mm-hmm. on down to places and all that kind of stuff. I would love to fly first class. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Uh, I, 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 I I'd enjoy I it too it. much. <laughs> I did it. I did it once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, look. Uh, I and the best part about it was I didn't have to pay for it. Oh, see, see, that's exactly what I want. See, I want to fly. Was, I was just, I was just, this is back in the day. Yeah. I was talking. I was talking real nice at a woman who was who was working at a booth. Mm-hmm. He asked me if I wanted to be in first class, and I said, "Yep, sixteen dollars in first class." That like I'm not gonna lie that that is that is gangster right there. <laughs> like I like that. I like I like yeah. That's what I want. I want the first. I want I want first class that I do not have to pay for, and uh and 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 to get in for free. That that, that that's that's all I that's all. And I, I was wearing this, <laughs> I was wearing this tri jacket that we had that had a little tri logo on the corner. Mm-hmm. So okay, I, guess I look like some I look like somebody important to her. <laughs> well, that, I guess that's a good question then. So. With everything that you're going to be doing, uh, like say you're going to be hitting the cons, you're going to be bringing the book back. Are y'all going to do any uh, like merch or anything like that? Yeah, merchandise is a very strong part of everything we do. Mm-hmm. So there will be t-shirts, hats, hoodies, sweatshirts, every, mm-hmm. everything known to man, including the skulls. And the skull cap and the skull cap that's going to be probably worn on your head. Yes, like I said, I. I I would wear it. <laughs> I would wear it because I, I don't do I don't do well with uh I don't do well with caps. They just they uh I I've never I've I've universally just never done well with them. So so plan on talking to me next week. Give me a mm-hmm. give me a half hour to talk to you about your brand. Oh okay yeah hey let's and, go and, 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 <laughs> and brand strategy and extension and mm-hmm. and how we're gonna jam you up in people's faces in these conventions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I, I, so, look, no, I won't so turn part, it down. <laughs> so, so part of it's going to be educational, and then I'm going to put it over to Larry for the self-defense and and, and martial arts part, you know, so he'll they, teach you. <laughs> When you, when you, it's, when you, it's more of an extension of bullying. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There well, you, go. you just got to elbow your way in. You just got to. This, this is a new technique called bully marketing from Johnson <laughs> Strowman. <laughs> I love. <laughs> I love it. So it's gonna be one of those things where, like, you uh, next time anyone sees me out at a con, they're just gonna be like, "Like, man, did I, dude, did you see, did you see Blur Without Fear? He was over there at the booth earlier. Yeah, man, he just fucking." elbowed me like it just bumped me out the way man i was trust me trust me you're gonna you're gonna remember this conversation and we're gonna talk about it a year from now you're gonna be like hey some of that stuff worked yeah that that's the part that's wild because i'm like you know what and you're gonna it would you're gonna owe us both sandwiches and a tasty drink hey look i I will go and tell you right now if uh if i am ever in the same uh if i'm ever at the same place that y'all are uh yeah no i i will most i i would i would do that just on principle there you go (laughs) memphis is known for good food so that's what we'll be expecting hey i'm just saying i'm hey if y'all if 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 y'all come through this way for whatever mid-south con mcx uh mcfc whatever hey (laughs) <laughs> holla at your boy right, <laughs> holla well, at your boy I'm writing um, that down we're gonna hold you to that hey hey look like hey put put you, my feet you, to the fire store? no 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 oh man i would i would not oh man no one wants to trust me uh with that type of uh <laughs> with who's, who's that type store? of investment who's your store of choice uh well uh we have a shop Oh, actually I actually have a few shops here i love 901 comics 901 comics east um and we also got uh the, I've seen that listed before. Yeah, that that's one uh or two rather. Um I know a lot of people talk about Memphis comics and collectibles. I don't go in there very often, not because I don't like them, but just because it's a little further away from me. And then uh we've also got the comic seller, as in like a basement. Uh the comic seller <laughs> is really awesome. Uh they're really good people, uh, and uh have been honestly so probably i would dare say selling me comics off and on since like i was a teenager uh, <laughs> so uh they got they got good people over there but yeah those those are really like the the ones and i know there might be one more that i'm not thinking about because just brain but um but yeah dude yeah they're this it's we got we got it memphis is a nice little setup comics wise uh, so you know, if, you it, to, yeah. if you want to get something 
you know, based on some of the guests that you have, like it's mm -hmm. not the big two, shall we say, mm -hmm. those are, those are stores that you would recommend. Oh yeah, no, most certainly, most certainly. Th those those are shops I would actually go in and spend money. Uh, okay. You know, like on on some level, on some level or another. Especially not on one comics and comic seller. I break bread with them all the time. That's good to know. Yeah, like I said, we like I said, we 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 got shops. We got we got we got those shops, and and I do know for a fact they do. Um, uh, well, I, I I don't know about comic sellers much, but I know uh, nine one comics. They usually have people come in. Uh, uh, you know, uh, creators, writers, artists colorists inkers whoever uh you know come in and uh like you know do signings and you know whatnot and what have you so i mean yeah it, that that's that's one of the main reasons why i usually why i'm going in there <laughs> but uh yeah other than the fact that i'm friends with some of the people there but yeah uh but yeah no it, it's yeah all, all good stuff I, I i highly highly recommend uh either one of those I was gonna say one last thing uh, that I, uh, I I wanted to ask, just you know, because you know, I'm sure this is something that I'm gonna be asked, so I want to make sure that I put it out there too. Is uh, you said that uh, the the comic is gonna be relaunching or uh, or, or coming back? You said it's gonna be this j uh, June of this year. Correct. Uh huh. And like, so, so just to be able for everyone to uh, be able to keep up with how to, you know, stay up to date on information uh, and to know when stuff is going to be dropping, because I'm going to put all this in the description. Where should people be able to uh, follow y'all on social media or uh, anything like that? You can follow us on Instagram at Tribe Comic, and you can follow us on our website as far as new news and updates at www.tribecomic.com. Dot com mm -hmm. and we would love for people to come over to the website and jump on the mailing list because obviously a lot of the exclusives and and secret stuff will be announced through email only you know you know so it's best to get on the guest list you know we're not going to be sending you emails every day with recipes or, <laughs> or anything <laughs> like that it, you know we're not going to be aggressive about you know only when there's news that relates to you you know and uh that, that that'd be the best way to keep up with everything tribe related thank y'all so much uh thank y'all so much for this this was this was awesome and such a good time and uh yeah i definitely i would i definitely would love to do this again i know like whenever you know i guess is Whenever y'all are ready to start doing some more uh, promotion for the book as it releases or just before release or, you know, whatever, please feel more than free to reach out to me. Uh, yeah. Love that. Yeah, I would love to have y'all back on. And like I said, I, 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 I genuinely look forward to seeing what y'all got cooking uh you know for this because it, it looks like it's gonna be something special you guessed it obligatory channel outro time if you're not subscribed to the channel consider doing so clicking that subscribe button and tapping that notification bell ensures that you get more videos just like this one and you don't miss any of my other content that i drop throughout the week plus my live streams every thursday and saturday and if you enjoyed the video make sure you click that like button keep it plus ultra and sound off in the comments